so the average Joe, if they're okay with having their rights taken away and having the government decide for them, um, Jesus, what does it take to wake a person up? Okay, good. Here we are, episode eight. And this is to get our rights back. If you're um, really happy with our, our um, who's the guy in the White House? The president? Okay. If you're happy with his actions, if you're happy with um, not having um, right personal rights or, or rights over your own body, if you think that, you know, the government is much smarter than you and ask your doctor if this is right for you, um, this probably won't, will be a waste of your time. If you're looking to get back your health, get back your freedom, I'm with a group of people here that has a plan and that is working. Okay, I'm joined by Dennis Nill, who um, serves as Justice of the State, um, Sheriff of Yavapaya County, and Arizona State Chairman and Recorder and Coordinator for the Arizona State Assembly, Diane Kayser, pro soccer player turned diagnostic uh, nutrition practitioner, Courage Coath, health and beauty, beauty expert, um, author of Killer Breast, I mean, brilliant. And our special guest today, Michelle Ford. Michelle, I've been so dying to talk to you. Okay, she organized and started uh, Vile Injury Awareness League, which, which that's is how I know, I know you. Okay, but also in the American Sovereignty Union. Um, mother of four, founder and president of uh, Vile, activists uh, representing parents since 2012. Um, she's committing herself as an advocate for a permanent solution. I mean, this is brilliant. I'm so glad to welcome you all. Okay, now this is for Thank YouTube. You. Okay, so some of the stuff in our current climate has to be censored. So we're going to try and understand what the Ministry of Truth will want. And if not, some of it will be edited out. Okay, it will be put on the freedom sites like the Dr. B VIP and any site we can find that has less censorship. Um, but M Michelle, I want to start with you. Um, share your story of, from the founding of Vile to advocating teaching common law. And I know you just got through teaching a class on common law this morning. Okay, what, what's your story, dear? Yeah, so I've been a parent advocate since 2012. Um, when AB 2109 rolled out, that was the bill where you know parents had to get a doctor to sign off on a medical exemption, or sorry, on a on a personal belief exemption here in California. And my oldest daughter was injured by her. And so when I had younger children, I knew that I had the authority to fill out a personal belief exemption form and turn that into the school for my younger children. However, AB 2109 attempted, sorry, attempted to take away that right. And I was going to need a doctor to sign off on my exemption form. So that was the first sort of usurpation against my rights regarding vaccination status. Then in 2015, I decided to found Injury Awareness League because I was already out in the community educating parents about how to obtain a personal belief exemption, educating people about related side effects, teaching them how to find doctors that were open-minded about these things. And this was during an environment where things weren't really talked about. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it was to me um, because I was personally affected. Well, two days after I founded Vile, I got my uh, nonprofit permission from the federal government. And then Senator Pan introduced SB 277, an absolute full on assault against parental rights, um, making it nearly impossible, nearly impossible for parents to exempt their children uh, for either some or all of the. And so parents were in record numbers facing the decision between keeping their kids in school or homeschooling. And my senator at the time, Senator Holly Mitchell, said two things. She said, you guys are just people. And she said, you don't own your kids. Now, those were very confusing terms for me because of what do you mean we're just people? This is the government and we the people, right? That's what I learned in school. The government is, is uh, run by our consent and our consent only. And when we had about 1,700 people show up in Sacramento, lobbying against SB 277, it made no sense to me that they could push this through. And then the second thing, you don't own your kids. I thought, of course, I don't own my kids. But this woman knows something I don't know. 
that's when I went on the hunt for where's my constitution. I thought that was my governing document after all. Little did I know it was a contract between the people and the, the government workers. So anyway, it set me off on a journey to find the answers. And so I'm glad to say that I have found them. Wow. Okay, so the the answers to that because we we're losing our our rights. Okay, I mean, you know, cover your face, and then there's 15 states vying for those rights to get back. Okay, where they're going to limit the ability of the government to shut down businesses, which is unconstitutional anyway. Okay, or you know, violate your own personal rights. What what have you found? Okay, what what's the the common law? What I know we're a nation supposed to be under God supposedly, right? Because there is a natural order of things. So there's God. God created mankind on the land. Mankind created really funny things like religions and governments and governments created corporations and corporations created these fictional entities known as citizens, persons, individuals, residents, aliens, students, uh, pupils, attorneys, (laughs) many, many other interesting uh, fictional terms. So what we help people to do is get actually get their rights back because as these fictional characters, as these fictional terms, we have no rights. We have rules, regulations, ordinances, codes, laws. We have um, measures, we have uh, emergency orders, we have executive orders. Um, but as when we're people and we're properly status corrected back on the land as mankind, we have God's law. unalienable rights um, that are given only by him. And so we help people to undo some of those contracts and get themselves back on the land in the proper authority where they belong. Is is it that simple? It's so simple. It's scary, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Because if you don't know who you are, you might say the wrong thing here and there. Um, However, yeah, you know, people get status corrected when they get married. They go from single to married. And that's not that hard. It happens all the time. People get status corrected when they go from being parentless to being a parent. Although I like to say mother or father. In the common law, it's mother, father, not parent. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. controlling the language is the craziest one. Like citizen, person, individual, resident. What what do those mean? Well, they mean you're, you're a subject. And I mean it literally. You are a fictional character identified by the name we call the all caps name or the straw man, which is the mindless entity. Um, And it's the name that appears on all of your sort of official documents, like your driver's license and your tax return and your bank account and things like this, right? So because only only fictional entities can contract with one another, the citizenship program that started with uh, basically between the 13th and 14th amendments when Lincoln freed the slaves, uh, he actually brought everyone down to the status of a citizen and the citizenship program was born. And so uh, citizen is a codified term in the congressional record. And so it's just a, it's just a term. It's part of the divide and conquer technique that we know Um And when people get classified as this subjugated fictional entity, then they get to be bossed around by codes, statutes, you know, measures, laws, rules, regs, orders, all of the above. Notice how our our founding documents start with we the people, right? But if you look on any of our rules and regs and laws and ordinances that affect people, they all say persons citizens, individuals, residents, right? All laws um, define who is affected by these rules, regs, ordinances, laws, measures, codes, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And so when you really start digging into the fine print and you find out these rules and regs apply to those fictional terms, nowhere does it say uh, these rules affect we the people. No, it doesn't say that. So, so when we're like, like um, when somebody says, okay, put the mask on, mm-hmm. uh, they don't have the authority to do that. Okay. Obviously no, no, nobody does. It's not constitutional. It's not in any law or rule. 
when we get our sovereign status back, can we literally walk into a store and say, look, if you were giving you know, products or services to the general public, you can't refuse me because that, that rule of putting a mask on or forced medical procedure without informed consent or you know, all the stuff that, that we can't really say it on the on the official version of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Once we get sovereign status, and I and I know um, Diane, you've done this before, where you know you flashed your sovereign card and said, "Hey, look, um, you know, I'm I'm not under the the laws that pertain or that that you think are here." Can 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 you get access to these stores or? Or once you get sovereign status, or do we have to get the more people involved in this to change the laws? I, I wasn't sure if you were asking me or Diane or both, but um, both, both. In, the, in a nutshell, and I, I, I'll of course yield uh, to Diane as well. But as it is right now, of course, these business owners have been turned into micro tyrants. You know, restaurant owners did not go into the restaurant business because they wanted to ask people about their vaccination status or force people to wear masks. They want to serve up great food. They want to create a social environment. But what has happened is these county boards of health have got them over a barrel because they're going to take away their licenses. They're going to shut them down if they don't do the bidding of these, you know, frankly, these tyrants. Um, it's so horrible how they've turned mom and pop shops into uh, officers of the health department. But that's what it's come down to. I'm actually working on an article about that right now. I'm so sorry. You know, the, the people and the free people apologize that you've turned into a micro tyrant for the deep state. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, so, as it is right now, those stores are saying, listen, I don't care about your freedom. Really? I just want to be able to sell my goods. So they're, they're defending their own pocketbooks. At the end of the day, they're defending their money. So it boils down to the root of all evil, right? Money. It's not, it's not the money itself. It's what money has done to mankind. It has corrupted our minds and made us selfish uh, in a certain way. And, and so that's what's happening. I do know that once we are fully assembled, we can fix these issues and help these business owners to gain their rightful status in this world to where they can offer their goods and service unencumbered without being threatened. And that's, you know, one of our, one of our short-term goals ultimately, but I think it might be a little bit cloudy in the beginning as people are figuring out who we are and how we plan to operate. Because we, we, we've got, we've got a couple of businesses in California that have never shut down yeah. and, and I've never shut down. Okay. And never put masks or anything else, but I put the, the laws up on the on the front window. So if you have a problem with that, beautiful. But you know, last 18 months, 19, 20 months, you know, I've been under the threat that they could shut us down any moment. And that irritates me. That's not right. It's now, not right. No. Diane, I know you've been in the in the the um, situations where you've had to flash your card of sovereignty or you know, you just tried to explain it to people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a bold move. When you're confronted with with people saying, "No, put the mask on, cover your nose, and do this," it's so easy to comply. Yes. Um, it just bothers my soul. Yes, me too. And that's what that's what it's going to take for everybody out there to see how we are walking around in an open air prison, mandated by, governed by, and taught to obey and threatened to punish by. Um, these tyrants, like you said, these tyrants who are primarily looking out for their bottom line profit rather than your above the line uh, uh, freedom to to my body, my choice. And, and it, 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 if it's if it suits the narrative of somebody else that my body, my choice in terms of like the least speak abortion, which I'm not going to go in that direction, but I'm just saying. If my body, my choice is something that um, we are standing behind, that women should be able to pick or choose for themselves, why is it in one side that they, that they should be allowed freedom, but on the other side, not? And so there are, I just did a podcast on this for my own channel as well, Seeking Speaking Your Truth podcast, where we spoke with a health insurance agent, and we're talking about our rights and what OSHA, how OSHA conflicts with the employers mandating no jab, no job. 
And so really, if you don't stand up for yourself now, and if you don't get uncomfortable with the lack of comfort that you have in your own home and stand up for your freedoms, you will have none. I mean, it, it is now or never. And it, 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 your voice is your instrument. And this is how we speak God through our temple is that vibra- the vibration of courage coming from you. And it, it takes a while to get used to, and it's never just something that's easy to do, but it becomes over time when you can practice our, your sovereignty. The single greatest thing you need and everybody needs right now is to know your rights. Just like Michelle said, we're building this now, just like Dennis has echoed over and over that we're building this now for a tomorrow future that we can create in the present. So yep. that's what I'm a stand for. I'm a stand for all of our freedoms. And, you know, it, it, we have to do this together and link arms together. If they all say, they all say we're in this together, which is the lie. No, we're not. We're not we're in it together for you and your agenda. But we're going to stay, we're in this together for another reason. And that is to stand for our freedoms and for our children. Because if we don't stand for our children now, like Michelle said, there is no future. There is none. The George, I'm not going to say that. Don't want to get, can't yeah, say yeah, those words. That, that the G guides don't. Now, De- Dennis, because you're a sheriff. Okay. You're, you're a sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When, when you're looking at, at laws and stuff, so you, you can't really get arrested for not wearing a mask. Or can you? Well, I mean, to, to fight author- the authority, what, what, is there any problem with just saying, hey, to heck with it, going in there, grabbing something, throwing down some money and walking out of the store or without a mask or restrictions or? Yeah, you shouldn't have to worry about it at all um, because there is no law. They're making things up as they go. They call it a mandate. Big whoop de doo It's a suggestion. And it's up to, you know, each individual uh, what they want to do. Right now, the the whole, you know what, is a scam. And uh, I'm not going there because I got my tape. Uh, so, <laughs> so we can move on this way. But, uh, yeah, it's like you, I went into the grocery store and I had uh, a mask on under my nose down here. So you could see my mustache and the lady behind me in the store made a comment and says, if it's not over your nose, it's ineffective. And I just took my mask down and the manager looked at me and the cashier looked at me and I says, I don't have to wear this thing, but I've been coming to this store for 20 years. I respect your privacy you need to respect mine but i took put this on just to appease you guys and the hell with everybody else because and i says and you know what and i'm not wearing this anymore and they just looked at me every time i came in the store and just hey how you doing like nothing ever changed nothing ever (laughs) happened but you know the the main part of it all is the six inches between your ears in what you believe is the truth, whether the media or the the other stations <laughs> and so on like that tell you it's this way or it's that way. But they're trying to see how much they can get away with and they're looking at everybody and it's, it's all about control. And we have to stop that control or we will be finished. That's why the assemblies are up and going. That's why we have people like Michelle and Diane and myself and all of the other 50 states, you know, in, you know, the states of the union moving forward to, you know, secure our freedom. Okay. Now, now, um, Michelle, can, can you explain uh, or share the timeline that how you created the California state assembly? Because I know I've got my paperwork almost done, and I know you're a recorder. I was going to get it recorded from you last week, but we right. we didn't get everything done. I, I, how do we how do we get our state back? Okay, so how we get our state back is by assembling each county. So we have to get two thirds of all counties on each state to assemble, and assembling just n- simply means that you have an interim government that's up and running. 
And so by interim, we mean, you know, these are elected by the nationals that are already properly status corrected on the county, uh, elected or appointed. And sometimes it just starts with one man or one woman going, I'm going to do this. I'm going to assemble my county. And uh, in fact, I just got reached out to by a gentleman way, way, way up in a little county in Northern California today saying, I'm ready. What do I do? So we're helping him to assemble his county. And it really takes um, as little as it's actually less than 40 people um, to begin your interim government on your county. By the way, Dr. Bergman, Orange County is just about to pop. I think within a week we're going to have all of this, all of the appropriate seats filled Um on Orange County to assemble Orange County. LA County is a, is fully assembled. We have a over 130 properly status corrected men and women on the land on LA. Um, and uh, we really only need 40 to have that jural assembly, less than 40 to have the jural assembly leg up and running. And we hope to have 75 on two thirds of the counties by September. So we can have our first du jour government election um, in over 160 years. Now that's one of the terms. What what's the difference between de jure and de facto? What, oh, uh, I'm so glad you asked. That's like the best question ever. So de jure means lawful, okay? Lawful. And when you think about lawful, you have to think about the stuff that makes sense. Because at the end of the day, this is all common sense, right? And uh, if you can think about like the Ten Commandments. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't be jealous of your neighbor's stuff. Don't you know? Don't kill anybody, right? The common sense kind of things. So that's du jour and it's what's lawful. Then we have de facto. It's what you see in fact. In fact, I see people walking around with a mask on when it's not lawful. In fact, I see people being harassed by the police for silly reasons like speeding. Speeding isn't lawful. There's no such thing as speeding. In common law, if there's no victim, there's no crime. So speed limits are a de facto uh, paradigm, right? You, what says you can't go 50 miles an hour down the street? If it's safe to do so and you didn't hurt anybody, why the heck not, right? Of course, we're not advocating for people to go out and do stupid things. In fact, it's the polar opposite. We're asking people to get back to basics, back to the Ten Commandments, back to understanding uh, the common sense aspects of our lives and back to a du jour environment, lawful environment. Now, at some point, what we predict will happen if we have anything to do with it, it will be that our du jour government becomes de facto. It becomes in fact. In fact, I am seeing now that people are behaving lawfully. In fact, I am seeing that people are taking responsibility for their actions and we're not living in a, a fear of liability environment, right? So that's really, you know, de facto is what we're seeing in fact. And it just, in fact, right now we're seeing a bunch of unlawful things in an upside down weird universe where boys are girls, girls are boys, up is down, down is up, God doesn't exist, yada, yada, yada. And we're going back to um, simpler times. We're inviting people to act responsibly and be lawful. Good God. If you need help in Orange County, I I'll, I'll serve on any board. I've got an office that'll hold 60, 70 people. Um, it, believe me, I, anything I can do. Oh, my God. Be careful that you said that. I'm going to hold you to it. I'll be, I, I'll be, I'll be at your office in two hours. We're going to do this. <laughs> Make well, sure I'm, you I'm, at the, everything. I'm at the Mexico clinic. But yeah, yeah, it's it's there's no lag time between it, idea and implementation. I This we got to implement now. OK, now, can you share with uh, what positions need to fill and how people can step up into service? I mean, Absolutely. like, like literally, not just for me, I mean, for everybody, because this is, this is the only key to get our freedom back. Yes, well, Michelle, you know, we've got a dentist is in Sedona. I'm also in Phoenix, uh, Anthem area. So there, there, it'd be awesome to also have some like links that we can check to see who we can talk to and how many people are in, in each assembly. Oh, this is now so we can fantastic. Really take action. Well, let me ask you. Uh, Dr. B, is it possible to uh, do a share screen share so I can share with you my little visual aid to help people um, see the seats that need to be filled? And, yeah. 
I think I can make you a host and then you could do everything. Okay. And then I'll give it back to you afterwards. Okay. Okay. So let's go to, here we go. All right. Can you see this? Yep. All right. So this, I made this little slide uh, as part of my class. So uh, what it takes to build a county, you need a, you need a volunteer coordinator, someone who stakes their claim on the land, becomes a lawful American and says, I will assemble this county. I happen to be the Los Angeles County coordinator. So we ask for people to come and just say, I'm going to do it and be that accountable person or accountable man or woman, not person. And then um, the first thing, the first job is to get a county recorder. The county recorder is someone who says, I'm going to learn how to be a common law notary. It requires two, three hour classes and then they get affirmed and they get their stamps and then they are a common law notary. And that's so necessary because they're going to have to help paper people on the county. Then we need a volunteer justice. We need a volunteer treasurer. We need a volunteer sheriff, coroner, bondsman, marshal at arms, 25 jurors because we have common law grand juries and then a militia slash peacekeeping task force. So we have very detailed um, procedures and uh, what needs to be done if, if anyone wants to volunteer for these roles. And we want to remind everyone that we are the interim government right now. Since we are not fully functioning, um, because we have not had our de jure elections yet, and we won't until November, um, these are just placeholder seats. It's sort of like how you can't get credit until you have credit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh -huh. You can't have a government until you have a government. So we are a volunteer interim government until we have enough men and women on the land that can actually run for office in November. And so we also say you don't have to be qualified as having this career in the de facto system before you became a lawful American, right? Let's say you're, you know, you've got a side business and you're doing your own books. Well, you can step up and volunteer to be the treasurer. Or let's say, you know, you're, you were formerly in the military and you're very comfortable uh, with firearms or training and uh, first aid, stuff like that. You might want to uh, volunteer to lead the peacekeeping task force militia, which I'll say a little bit more about in a second. You can, uh, all Americans can serve as jurors. And let's say you're a nurse or a doctor and you want to serve as a coroner because you understand what death looks like versus what life looks like. And you can proclaim to know the difference and uphold that in your affirmation. Then you can step up and volunteer to be the coroner, in, interim coroner. Same thing with the other offices, right? You might be a law buff. You might be a history buff. And then you, justice of the peace would be a perfect situation for you to volunteer for. So as you can see, this is really less than 40 people. Um, it's the 25 jurors plus the uh, remaining seats to be volunteered for. And then also people get confused by the term militia. Sometimes people say, um, you know, militia, whoa, that's violence. You know, uh, we're, I'm afraid of that. Well, I want to redirect this idea about militia. Okay. Cause there are some people in this country that are doing assembling and they're all about the guns. They're like ready for this, you know, violent revolution. Well, that's not the assembly. So I understand why they feel that way. I understand how they got there. Trust me. I'm a, I was a mad mama bear until I found the solution. Um, so I get it, but we're not doing violence. We're not doing insurrection. We're not doing rebellion. We're not doing terrorism. We are doing an administrative process. Okay. But militia, our militia are those good neighbors, those good neighbor people that, you know, if you broke a leg, they're the one going, hey, I'll pull out your trash cans for you. I'll bring you a hot meal. You know, they're the ones that run the PTA at the local school, right? Those are the peacekeeping militia people. So when you think about people in your community that are like that, that's exactly who we're looking for to fill our militia. And of course, it helps if you understand about firearms, sorry, not firearms, but arms. See, we don't have firearms in lawful America. We have arms. Um, <laughs> so 
you know, these are the people we're looking for. And then once your county has those seats filled with those volunteer positions, then we are well on our way towards our number of 75 by September. That's what we need in order to announce our lawful du jour elections for November 2nd. And we are well on our way here on California. We are doing it. We are replicating our efforts, teaching counties how to do it. And counties are just like, whoop, 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 you know, so it's happening. Cool. Easy, right? Easy, so much easier than begging our legislators, like, stop stealing my rights. Stop stealing my rights. Please, please, please. And I, you know, I gave a $20 donation when Joe Corporation down the street gave him a million dollars. Right. Who are they going to listen to? <laughs> okay now now D diana dennis what's what's it like in uh, arizona do you guys got um all the counties involved are you up to the status that california is or beyond um well we have we have 15 counties here i'm not sure how many are in california i know there's probably more uh we're kind of just we have huge counties and uh we have 13 of them populated which means we have uh, assemblies in each one of those counties and we have justices in each one of those counties and most of the jurors. We are still looking for people to become treasurers and uh, secretaries and you know uh, things like that. But, and we have 10 uh, state recorders. Uh, we have the 10 state recorders, so because we don't have enough people in the counties, in all of the counties to be county recorders yet. But uh, we are moving, you know, quite quickly, uh, probably maybe, uh, who knows, it's fast or whatever, as California or Florida um, or some of the other states. But, uh, yeah, we, in fact, we have our state assembly fully functioned. We have a coroner, we have uh, the recorders, and we have justices and jurors. So we have a state jural assembly. We just don't have the county ones yet because we're building the counties. And you have a pie where Diane and I are, um, the county, we have enough people there. We just need some other people to step step up for like Sergeant at Arms. We do have the militia up and running, uh, comprised, you know, Sierra Arizona militia. We don't have uh, county ones yet. I mean, we do, but they're small, but uh, they're growing. And we do have, like I said, our state general <laughs> assembly up and running. Okay, so now what, because we're we're getting towards the end, we got to hold this down to about a half hour. What what's the best places for people to find all of you? Like 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 Dennis, what's the next step? Like if somebody wants to join, support, find their freedom, how would they get a hold of you? Sovereignnational.us. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Now you guys get together what every Thursday or is it Mondays? Both. Yeah, we, we have a, a call with uh, Anna every Monday and she gives out, you know, information of what's going on, you know, nationally and through the Federation. And then uh, every Thursday we have a call and every second Tuesday of the month we have a state meeting. And then if we need other meetings, I, you know, send out an email and whoever, you know, uh, can be on that call. We have, you know, a discussion meeting on what's happening or if there's an emergency or someone like that, um, you know, to get people together and, you know, get their uh, voices heard on, you know, what needs to be done or take care of at the time. Dennis, so if, um, let's yeah. make sure to announce this too, because there is going to be a change to uh, On the Bun Rights News website. Uh, since there is a lot of, uh, there's lack of transparency that's happening and GoDaddy, um, well, let's just say the server changes need to happen. And so Dennis, what is the new website? I can look it up to, um, for Anna Von Rights since that's going to be shifting. Well, it used to be the American States Assembly.net. Now it's T-A-S-A dot American Nationals, uh, I'm sorry, American State Nationals dot org. Okay, and, and we're gonna have all those links below when this video gets posted, for sure. Right. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of changes in where you find us. Don't freak out. It doesn't mean that you know we fell apart or there's any fraud or anything. It means that uh, the opposite, there's other fraud elsewhere and we're trying to get away from it. <laughs> and we're growing. Yeah. Yes. So, so if, if you're- our service. So the average Joe, if they're okay with having their rights taken away and having the government decide for them, um, Jesus, what does it take to wake a person up? 
I mean, this is this is the you know, look at North Korea, look at where communism, socialism has already been. Okay, uh, we're 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 heading down that road. Michelle, what what's the best way? Because God knows, man, when we're done with this, we're getting together. We'll we'll hold meetings in my office. I'll do whatever is required because we're saving the patients and we're saving, you know, our lives. Well, the fact of the matter is, I personally believe that the health freedom movement was made for this movement. I think that the government knew, the de facto government knew that if parents were upset enough uh, with these egregious overreaches of authority, that they were going to somehow get pushed. That's why they marginalized us as being anti-vaxxers and all of these lovely terms that they threw on us. I believe that the health freedom movement was made for this, this, breaking everybody free. And so I think it was a movement that divided a lot of people because they were fearful of the unvaccinated or, uh, unvaccinated or partially vaccinated. But I believe it's the health freedom movement that's going to save this country and the world, frankly. I think it's going to be the greatest unifier ever. And, um, and so what people need to do is they need to get in touch with their state coordinator or their county coordinator. They can go to tasa.americanstatenationals.org and find their state coordinator and it'll trickle down from there. Get papered and assemble your counties and we will save this country. Yeah, and, and it starts on the county level. Mm-hmm. Um, then, if you've seen the earlier episodes, Dennis is saying the sh- the local county sheriffs can kick out the FBI, the CIA. They're the ultimate power. I mean, I thought of leaving this country and starting a monastery like place where you know can hold knowledge while the world goes to hell in a handbasket. Then I thought, no, wait a second. This is our country. Okay, America had rights before this this um, totalitarian insanity. Okay, so you know, look look at where your life was a few years ago, and what you thought the world was was like. You know, what freedoms you thought you had, how no one could shut down your business, and this will. Um, you give a tyrant a little bit of room, and they're going to take everything. And we're in a tyrannical world right now. And the only way to get it back is by making the effort. Give a call to someone. Call me. Call me at my office. Talk to Michelle, Diane, Dennis. I mean, this is this is like a think tank group where I'm getting my information. So, um, I mean, we we got you got to make the effort. You got to. If not, um, it, it, imagine. Look at the pathway of the last year and a half. Where does that lead to? It does not lead to health, freedom, abundance, and security. Okay, trusting yourself, trusting the land, trusting you know, where we are, we can organize this to get, get abundance back in America. Absolutely. You are 100% spot on, Dr. Bergman. That's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what we're creating. And we're helping people to be the Americans that they always thought they were. They thought we were we the people, but no, that's a whole separate class. We're teaching people to, how to get back into that class. Okay, now this, I don't know if this will make the cutoff, but I've been listening to this um, North Korean defector, young gal, and she is saying how you would get arrested if you wear the wrong um, haircut. You get arrested if you're wearing the wrong clothes. They're the thought police over there. Um, in England, they they arrested a guy because he was going to speak an event. He didn't speak at the event. He was going to speak there. I mean, this is happening in Australia, New Zealand, where where more rights. The fourth wave, the fifth wave. Okay, you know, come on, Doctor B. Wake my up, friend, my friend Lena. Uh, we interviewed her for our podcast, and uh, she's she, you met her, Dennis, too. She spoke at the Sedona movement uh, events, and she had a friend when this is when they all went to lockdown in Denmark um, and they or actually, she was in Ibiza at the time in Spain and they had her friend and her were out walking in nature and her friend was stopped, followed by a drone that was operated by the government. And she was, uh, they, they came into her home and arrested her for walking outside of her home this is not minor stuff. This is happening to people who are near and dear to our hearts in other countries. And America 
is the last standing nation that can take this power back. And it is up to us now because they're showing us outside and other nations what it will look like if we don't. And we don't have a lot of time yet. Brilliant, brilliant. And that's, I've got a bunch of international patients and, you know, even after the shutdown and they're saying America is the world's, the world's only hope, not just for America, but that we're a group of countries that are governing under inalienable rights. Okay. You know, that, that have some federal rules that we all agreed with and, and each state, there's 15 states now that are passing legislation to stop the, the, the governmental overreach. And the health freedom, by God, if you don't think that that freedom of what's done to your body is like the ultimate, because your body is built in the image and likeness of God, even if you don't believe that, billions of years of evolution, okay, it's smart. But I would want interventions done to me under my choice. The, the basic common sense. Okay, I got, thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody here. This is um please contact I, I know you got questions but do not go quietly into that night okay you know we, we were started by throwing the tea in the bay if you're happy with everything going on you're not going to pick up those bags of overtaxed tea and throw them in the bay but this is your children being taken away from you 12 year olds are going to be able to decide on the medical procedures they're going to get oh boy that won't make them that won't make the 60 the, Okay, imagine if I didn't say that. <laughs> you, know? you know, you have to be able to be old enough to serve in the army in order to make decisions for your own self. And I think you're smart enough to make decisions for your own body over the government deciding for you. They've done a bang up job so far. <clears throat> God bless you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bergman. This is such an important conversation to be able to bring to the public at large. And so thank you for being willing, you know, for being, you know, living life on the skinny branch, as I say, because that's what it takes. We are um, an example for the rest of the world. And we are an example for people who are feeling oppressed, whether they're somewhere else or here on America. So, you know, we get to show them what can be done. And it's sort of like when Babe Ruth hit that ball way out into the stands, he was like, he pointed and said, like, that's where my ball's going. And then he did it. It opened up a whole new realm of possibility for a lot of other people. And so you, you're doing that. And I just want to say thank you. <laughs> God and bless y'all. And all, you know, your people too, with the, these episodes that we've done, your people reach out to me and just say things like, thank you. And just keep going. You know, it, sometimes the, the work that we do here, it, it could be a thankless job and we're behind the scenes doing this work. Um, so thank you all too and Dr. B's community for just coming to us. And it, it, it all matters. We truly do appreciate you too. And, and speaking out and speaking up and sharing these episodes because this is how we can take it back. You matter more. We're, we're talkers. We're here. But this is how you can show up to do your part too. It's just to share this. Bless you. God, I'm lucky to know you guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> until, until next time. Okay. We're, we're fighting the good fight. We're going to win. Obviously, we're going to win. Wait, Dr. Bergman, can I say one more thing? Yes, what? I just want to give a shout out to Nancy Kramer because Nancy was the one who told me about the assembly back in January. You know, I had been on this learning journey since 2015, but I didn't know that assembling was happening. And that was the one missing piece for me. So big shout out to Nancy Kramer, who's our California chairman and, um, and, and that she introduced me to Kat. <laughs> ah, and I'm going to be meeting Nancy and you when I sign my papers next week. Awesome. You know, I'm going to bring her with me. So that's great. Awesome. There you go. Good for you. It's okay. about time. That's all yeah. I got to say. <laughs> it was a lot of papers. And I'm, I'm going to actually have all of the papers, everything that I signed, okay, all on the Dr. BVIP site. So, and where to get them, how to do it, what needs to be done. Because I know I did one that was in blue ink and should have been in red ink. Red. Or, you know, so there's there's all sorts of little things that have to be done correctly. I have your little red thumbprint pad. I yep. carry that everywhere it goes. So when I sign papers, I, I sign my name by Diane Kaiser and Blue Ink, and I have a red thumbprint, and that's in my tiny little purse. So everywhere I go, that's the only way that I'll sign. 
Okay, bitching. I love that. Yep. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank I'll you. see you next time. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Dr. You got Thank it. You Thanks. Yourself. Thanks, everyone. If you can hear my voice, you are part of the resistance.